Well, happy holidays, everybody. I'm working on uh, models right now. I'm actually working on animations in, I'm curious, basically a few videos ago, I covered how I created animations for like uh, separate pieces of these models, like their head, their shoulders, their body armor, the cape, um, stuff like that. Check it out in the game. We can see that we can kind of mix and match all sorts of different armor pieces like the breastplate the pauldrons um have different cape like i'll just i'm just i'm just running the game and every time it's randomizing what armor i'm wearing eventually you'll be able to earn different kinds of pieces armor in uh wraith binder and mix and match stuff like boom you order you like buy a breastplate or buy you know buy a cool cape stuff like that so you can mix and match your armor and um but the point is that let's try and get one with a cape here because um when we get the cape we can pretty clearly show oh we're just not getting the cape right now but anyways let's just get this item here and you can see when uh like when i jump in the air all the armor has to respond to like different translations and rotations for all of these different animations like fo so when you swing your sword the pauldrons have to move forward a little bit see that how it's they're kind of like slow down time here right there for a couple of those frames the pauldrons are way forward because he's leaning forward and striking with the sword like that um so before i was doing it here manually i would have for each section right here's the cape um for every single one of these frames of animation, I've got a translation, um, a 3D translation, and then a 3D rotation. Um, but there's some real drawbacks to that um, because it's kind of like difficult to um, to get those exact translations. You have to like, I would have to go into Magicka and sort of like estimate stuff because basically here's the model for my, uh, for the, the male character right but here's like a for example here's a here's the model for a shield right it's not like both of these models are in the same 3d space right here um one is offset from its middle and the other is offset from its middle or its anchor point and therefore it kind of gets crazy when you're trying to animate all this stuff um by hand in a text file right so, but then there's a lot of other benefits to possibly using Blender. So basically what I've been doing is exploring Blender, right? So I've got a character here, all of his pieces of his body and his armor are all separated out into different um, meshes inside Blender. And in Blender we can animate stuff and it stores like, so we've got three keyframes here and just doing the same animation that the character does um, for idling. This is the idle animation right here, just rendered in, in Blender, basically. Um, so as this gets ex imported into Wraithbinder, I haven't written this part of the code yet, but the idea is to basically animate it here in Blender, but then import it into Wraithbinder so it won't look all like... It won't look all Minecrafty like this. It'll look like Wraithbinder does, where it's got its pixel art. Right, so it'll take that model and basically make it like a like a, as if it were made in Magic of Voxel, you know. So like just like it does right now, it'll look like this, except the animations will be able to be sixty frames a second, because I'll be able to um, before the game is even loaded. Right, I can do I can write a command line tool um, that basically goes in, reads the reads the uh, the Blender file. And then reads in all the the magic of magic of voxel files that would make up that character. Let's go back to the male idol here. Um, so read in like a piece of you know read in his lower arm, read in his upper arm, and then translate and rotate them based on Blender's keyframes. And then um, and then basically create a model, a finished model um, that's all customized too. So you can have like your cape. In, and everything all compiled into one simple magic of voxel file so it what I'm trying to say here is here in blender it looks like it's all vectory right like each 
each voxel can be split into you know several different pixels but in Wraithbinder it's all every voxel corresponds to a pixel so basically this animation here will get really um, pixeled out and will look look a lot more uh, I don't know friendly for that whole pixel art aesthetic so there, there's a lot of benefits to possibly making this blender thing happen if if the the one drawback I'm seeing here in the, with this blender, um, because, oh I should show this too. There's also the uh, the mail rig when so this is uh this is what the mail rig looks like. Oh whoops I haven't opened it. Uh, we can just show it here in Magic of Voxel. There's a mail rig I've got. So this is what the mail rig looks like right here, basically. And then I it, like I started with a Blender file that's just this, and then I made him. I just moved and translated and rotated all the stuff to make him into this pose right here, where he's got this his left leg forward, his right leg back, his you know arms holding the sword, and he's sort of squatting a little bit too in this in this animation or in this frame, this pose here. Um, so that really, really makes it so um, it could be really cool, right? We could have some really nice um, inter like interpolations going on so that all the animations are running at 60 frames a second. But that could also happen here with this text file. I would just have to, you know, it's just using keyframes basically. But the one drawback here in Blender that I'm seeing that might be an issue, might not be an issue, I'll have to figure that out once I do some more code, is that... Um, like stuff like this where whoops where you where we've got this sort of chunk of his body right that's rotated here too both of his upper arm sections they're rotated at such an angle that when that translates into pixel art will it look good will it look right right that that's that's the question on my mind right now and then also things like when you've got your arm there's certain times in pixel art and voxel art where you really want to just extend a body piece for a while. Like for example, here in this idle animation, his arm, his, his left arm right here is actually extended farther than it could be physically with voxels. In fact, we shouldn't have like these voxels right here and his hand should be moved back a little bit to make his arm the proper length. But we can exaggerate motions with pixel art and voxel art and that's what makes some some of that kind of art so beautiful is that you can really just exaggerate things and almost make it a cartoon style um in a sense right look how look how long that that arm is and how skinny this arm is right there right you can just do these exaggerations so that won't be possible in blender but it will be interpret it will be uh sorry um making this all down to a pixel art scale so it, it probably will look okay but will it look as good as I could by manually animating every single frame in Magicka? Possibly not. But the the drawback here in Magicka is that we don't have 60 frames a second. We only have 10 frames a second, really, that's possible for a single programmer artist like myself to do. So, so gosh, this has been a long video talking about this, all this, this, um, these models and Blender and all that, but um, some real, this could make some real beautiful artwork come to life. Can you imagine having 60 frames a second animations in a game like this? We've already got camera rotation and things like that. Gosh, it's, it's really slowing down. I need to optimize that. But, um, yeah, this could make all the animations a little bit easier to create as well. So right now I've only got one sword animation, right? Just keeps on doing that same sword animation over and over. I want to do a couple more, but it would be, I think it would be easier to do those extra animations in Blender. Um, but then again, in Magicka, we've got that extra resolution that extra, that, and that exaggeration. So, who the heck knows? <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for watching this video. Catch you next time.